Hello everyone, and welcome to DM Tools with Max McCool. On today's episode of Monsters Manifested, we're going to be covering another monster that finds its roots in real-world mythology with the Cyclops. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. The Cyclops takes up page 45 of the Monster Manual, and its lore goes as follows. Cyclopes are one-eyed giants that eke out a meager existence in wild lands. Isolationists by nature, they avoid contact with other races and try to drive away strangers in their territory. Non-religious Legends claim that the Cyclopes are the spawn of one of the gods of the giants, but these creatures pay little heed to any deities. They see little benefit in prayer and dislike ritual, which they perceive as complex and foreign. However, a cyclops that gains direct benefit from some sight of divine power or which is threatened by a supernatural force or creature will pay homage as long as the benefit or threat remains. Unsophisticated Though they are reasonably intelligent, cyclopes live simple, reclusive lives, keeping herds of animals for food. They prefer to dwell alone or in small family groups, layering in caves, ruins, or rough structures of dry stone construction they build themselves. A cyclops keeps its herd animals with it at night, sealing the entrance to its home with boulders to let it serve double duty as a barn. A cyclops layers within a day's journey of other cyclopes so that they can meet to trade goods or seek mates. They craft weapons and tools of wood and stone, but will use metal when they can find it. Although cyclopes understand the giant tongue, they write nothing and speak little, using grunts and gestures for their interactions with each other. Cyclopes don't use money for trade, but they value gold, shells, and other glittering and colorful objects as jewelry. A cyclops might wear a necklace strung with feathers and silver coins, but also with pewter goblets, cutlery, and other bits of ruined metal. Unwise. Cyclopes aren't great thinkers or strategists. Slow to learn and bound to their traditional ways, they find innovation difficult. Although they are a terrifying threat in combat due to their size and strength, they can often be tricked by clever foes. Cyclopes can be cowed and awed by obvious displays of magic. Rustics with little exposure to magic, they can be deceived into mistaking a warlock, cleric, or other caster for a powerful divine figure. However, their sense of pride causes them to react with vengeful, bloodthirsty violence once they learn that the individual they assumed was a god is a mere mortal. And that's all we've got when it comes to the lore of the Cyclops, Pretty interesting. I'm surprised that they went that route to kind of make the Cyclops more of a simplistic, I would even say bordering on oafish type character or creature, especially due to the fact that in real world mythology, the Cyclops is described to be a threat both physically with its size and stature and aggression and stuff like that, but also with its level of intelligence. I mean, in one of the original tales of the Cyclops, which I think is called Theogony, the Cyclopes are three brothers, and they made the Thunderbolt for Zeus. So if they could craft something of that level of power, they'd have to have some form of intelligence or intellect, right, to craft and create the weapon that the god king of the gods would use, right, to rule over the realms or what have you. But that's okay. We can definitely work with what's been presented to us, and we can stray a little bit further far afield when we get into some adventure crafting. So, But until then, let's move on to the stat block. The Cyclops is a huge giant with a chaotic neutral alignment. It has an armor class of 14, which is natural armor. It has hit points that average 138 or... 12d12 plus 60, and it has a movement speed of 30 feet. The Cyclops has a strength of 22, a dexterity of 11, a constitution of 20, an intelligence of 8, a wisdom of 6, and a charisma of 10. The Cyclops has a passive perception of 8, speaks the giant language, and has a challenge rating of 6. On to the abilities. Poor depth perception. The Cyclops has disadvantage on any attack roll against a target more than 30 feet away. On to the actions. Multi-attack. The Cyclops makes two Great Club attacks. Great Club. 
is a melee weapon attack with a plus 9 to hit, a reach of 10 feet on one target. On a hit, it does an average of 19 or 3d8 plus 6 bludgeoning damage. And finally, Rock is a ranged weapon attack with a plus 9 to hit, a range of 30 feet to 120 feet on one target. On a hit, it does an average of 28 or 4d10 plus 6 bludgeoning damage. And that's all there is when it comes to the stats for the Cyclops. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple block there to work with. Definitely offers an opportunity to create a couple of different instances in which you could use a Cyclops. But either way, let's see what we can do with the Cyclops in terms of creating some scenarios or adventures and encounters for your players. So let's get into some adventure crafting. Okay, so immediately... The first thing that comes to mind for me when looking at the Cyclops as a focal point or main antagonist for your table is that of effectively what they're presented as. The sort of reclusive, isolationist, oafish, brutish type of giant, right? And you can go for a very straightforward adventure there, a very straightforward quest or mission, what have you, in the way of a type of monster hunt where the player's adventure into some town or village or some isolated area, something like that. And there's an individual who who wishes to task the adventurers with taking down and overthrowing this Cyclops. Now, the reasoning as to why this individual would want the Cyclops dealt with is where you can kind of expand on things a little bit and fill in your adventure a bit more, give it a bit more meat in that you can use different angles to incentivize your players. So you could do something as simple as perhaps it's a Cyclops who is reclusive and is terrorizing these individuals, this group of people or what have you who are trying to settle down in this location of unclaimed territory and they're trying to sort of set the foundation and and develop a town or village or settlement, trading post, something like that. And quite simply, the Cyclops isn't having any of it. So every time they try to erect some towers or walls or something to that effect, the Cyclops comes in and tears up the settlement and they have to start from scratch every day or every week or something like that, right? As soon as they put something up, the Cyclops lumbers in and takes it all down. And that's a very quick and straightforward way of creating an adventure right there, because then you can implement things where the players have to perhaps track the Cyclops or follow the trail of devastation left in its wake. Perhaps they have to find out where the Cyclops resides and maybe lay a trap for it, like an ambush of some sort or something like that. And you can very quickly put together something implementing a Cyclops that you could use as a main adventure, either due to the fact that this settlement town, perhaps your players are the individuals responsible for guarding the town. So you can generate a significant quest there where since that's the task that your party has been charged with, then they are obligated by bond or oath or what have you to go deal with this Cyclops. And then you can reward them. Perhaps the Cyclops has a wealth of treasure and stuff of that nature for them to collect and build the wealth of the town. Perhaps it could be something more in the way of a structural resource, like for example, The Cyclops resides in this sort of stony cave with a massive door and all of that stuff. So maybe there isn't very much in the way of loot and treasure for your players to happen across. But if they're there to assist and oversee the development of the settlement, then suddenly there's a prefabricated structure that's been erected already with a gigantic stone vault door that they could use as stores for the wealth that they collect or for anything of value or anything to that effect, right? Another way that you can go about using the Cyclops in a similar fashion would be in the way of perhaps there's some form of alchemist that seeks out materials, organic materials that come from the Cyclops in order to create a new potion or tincture or something to that effect that they require in order to complete but 
Clearly, they're not in any shape or condition to take on a gigantic, one-eyed monster man. So they task the party with going to the Cyclops or finding a Cyclops and dealing with it. And then you can create a scenario where the resource that they're seeking is that of the Cyclops itself, right? So perhaps this alchemist requires the eyeball of the Cyclops for a potion of true sight. Or perhaps the alchemist requires some flesh or blood or bone of the Cyclops in order to make this new prototypical advanced form of a potion of giant strength or something to that nature, right? And right there you can implement an adventure for your players to undertake that will be fun and intriguing, especially due to the fact that it'll present to them the concept of this strange new type of potion that I'm sure any one of them would be willing to be the guinea pig, if you would, to see how its effects take place. And then you can generate the outcome of what occurs when they drink this experimental potion as you wish, right? Which could lead to some hijinks and hilarity. Another way that you could implement Cyclopes as the main attraction for an adventure or anything like that, or series of adventures, is by, I would say, pulling a little bit from both the lore that's presented to us, as well as the real world mythologies, in that you perhaps have these creatures who are very skilled and effective craftspeople and they can create all sorts of tools and weapons and armor and stuff of that nature, but they are also reclusive and perhaps not hostile, but less than welcoming when it comes to seeing strangers or foreigners approach their land. And you can create an adventure or series of adventures there where you have the player's seeking out this tribe or village of Cyclopes and requesting their aid in fabricating or fashioning some great mythical piece of armor or a weapon or something to that effect. And you could make this a singular adventure where effectively the Cyclopes need a singular item or material in order to craft this mystical, magical, powerful weapon, or you could create a series of adventures where perhaps the players have to seek out multiple different materials in order for the Cyclopes to smith or create this item for them. Perhaps the players have to perform certain tasks or go through certain rites or trials that are commonplace of the Cyclopes to sort of prove their worth in wielding or wearing these mythical or magical items that the Cyclopes create. Perhaps it's a, a rite of passage type thing. And then you can expand outward from there. And who knows what the Cyclops or Cyclopes would want or need from the adventurers in terms of acquisition. Perhaps there's something more to the, the Cyclopes than them just being these sort of brutish, sort of caveman type creatures who lumber about and only craft things of stone and wood and stuff like that. And with that, you could also go the route of them being a bit more simple and susceptible to, to deceit. You know, you could make them a bit more gullible and make them sort of see one of the adventurers perhaps as some form of divine individual, especially if you have a cleric or a wizard or sorcerer, warlock, something like that, where they can perform magic or craft illusions and stuff. And then you could have the Cyclops or Cyclopes sort of revere this character as a divine entity type thing, and they might be inclined to serve them and craft whatever it is that they require or desire. You could have the Cyclopes determine that these individuals seem helpful or strong or powerful, and they decide to ally themselves with the party, which could also lead to some interesting outcomes if your party suddenly has a massive, one-eyed, brutish individual sort of walking around as their bodyguard alongside them. And it wouldn't destroy, I think, the balance necessarily of your game or your adventure, especially because the Cyclops is a challenge six. It's a CR6 monster, so effectively, once you get into mid-tier play, the Cyclops will be just as susceptible to damage and getting hurt by other creatures and monsters as the players will be, right? And I mean, to go further with that, you could even say that perhaps this Cyclops is a bit of a coward. So perhaps the players present themselves to the tribe of Cyclopes. The Cyclopes see them as these divine beings. They revere them. They worship them, stuff like that. And perhaps the Cyclopes are the ones that 
request the favor of these divine gods, if you would, and request that they toughen up and strengthen and teach the runt of the pack or the, the, the most cowardly and fearful of them and take them along on this sort of spirit quest with them in order for the Cyclops to build their strength and their resolve and their toughness. You know, and I think that could be a pretty interesting adventure or series of adventures and could lead to some interesting outcomes. Finally, I think that another way that you could use the Cyclops is that in the way of a guard of some sort, perhaps the Cyclops protects a hoard of treasure or resources, something to that effect. And with that, you could then implement the Cyclops as sort of a monster of the week type situation with your players at the table where the Cyclops perhaps has taken residence in some ancient cave or place, perhaps on an island, if you wanted to go the way of Homer's Odyssey with the Cyclops Polyphemus, and he just has a store or a cache of resources and livestock, and perhaps that would work well when it came to a campaign that was seafaring, let's say. Perhaps you had a pirate campaign or a sailing campaign that involved a lot of water travel, boat travel. Your players could stumble upon an island that is guarded or protected or on which resides a Cyclops, and the Cyclops has a huge pile of resources that the adventurers could acquire and use to sustain themselves on the high seas. And there's a lot of it due to the fact that the Cyclops is this gigantic humanoid creature. And as straightforward as that could be, you could always inject a little bit of character or flair to the Cyclops. Perhaps the Cyclops is humorous or is of a musical inclination. Perhaps the Cyclops enjoys riddles or jokes or songs or something like that. And you could create a bit more of a amicable trade rather than a show of force and aggression. But it really all depends on how you wish to present the Cyclops or Cyclopes in your world. And of course, how your players react to them. All in all, I think that the Cyclops could be a pretty interesting addition to your adventures or campaign, in part because of the fact that they're represented in such a simplistic way. You could even have an instance where perhaps most Cyclopes in the world are these sort of brutish, primitive, oafish creatures that are kind of the cave people of the time, or of that realm rather, and don't present much of a threat so long as they're left alone, but perhaps they used to have a large rule over the land or a large kingdom. Perhaps there's hidden pockets of more intellectual, I suppose you could say, cyclopes and this sort of lost knowledge. You could create a an ancient sort of civilization of cyclopes that have all sorts of ancient advanced technology or arms and armor or stories or poems or spells or alchemy sciences, stuff like that and you can flesh them out quite a bit and that would sort of fuse or marry the two aspects of the cyclops being both the sort of simplistic single-eyed version of your standard fair giant in the lore and these kind of advanced types of beings that sort of live among the gods and craft these weapons that sort of contend with the weapons and armor that were crafted by Hephaestus in Greek mythology, right? But either way, I think the Cyclops is a creature that can present a nice change, a refreshing change in the standard fair giants that are presented in in the monster manual, and all it takes is a little bit of tweaking or adjustment to them in terms of their place or position or role in your world that could lead to some intriguing experiences with the players at your table. But that's all I got for you fine folks today when it comes to implementing the Cyclops as the main attraction for your next adventure. On next week's episode, we finally get into the letter D in the Monster Manual, and we'll open that up by covering the Dark Mantle, which I think could be pretty cool. So, we'll see how it plays out when we get there. But once again, thank you all very much for tuning in. I highly appreciate it. If you folks are listening to this episode of Monsters Manifested on YouTube, I'd kindly ask that you like, share, subscribe, all of that fun stuff, as it would help me out, help build the channel, help grow the podcast, and all in all be a, an awesome thing to do. But until next time, 
Thank you all very much once again for tuning in, and I will see you on the next one. Have a good day, everyone.